Hello, how are we doing? Right, let me just get my things back up. There we go. So, starting this uh, final segment into Heathrow a smidge earlier than I would have actually. We're, we've just passed out of West Germany into Belgium. Um, and those of you with a very, very keen eye will have spotted that we are currently on heading hold and not INS. Um, so the short reason is the INS went to shit. The long reason is I clearly did something wrong and we didn't fly the route that we were supposed to fly. Um, not entirely sure why. I have a sneaky suspicion. It's because I didn't flick this button here. Which, if you look at the end, uh, nav... Uh, VOR1, blah, yeah, Nav1, sorry, I was right the first time, display. You can see how that changes. When we come out of Nav mode, using the radio navigation, and flick it into INS, which is over to the right-hand side, it changes this. And I'm wondering whether the autopilot, when it's in INS mode, rather than actually following the INS, it follows what the INS is punching into this. Now, the reason I'm not 100% is because we got a good way of... a good distance. And it certainly navigated the first leg. First card, shall we say, of the INS. Absolutely fine. Um, started noticing it was going a bit weird towards the, the top end of the Aegean Sea when we were clipping over the land when we should have actually been between Italy and Croatia, that sort of way. But we were actually just clipping over Croatia. Anyway, what I should have done at the time was go through everything and make sure that everything was set correctly. Alarm bell should have rung because I think I said in the video it seemed a bit too much for INS error given that our INS was on 14. Um, zero being the best, unachievable. But, you know, in flight the lowest you tend to get is 14. Uh, you tend not to get lower than that in flight. On the ground, when you're doing your align and everything, that can go as low as 5. Maybe even a smidge lower than that, but again, doesn't tend to go lower than that. But in So we had good accuracy. So I had, there was no reason that we should have been off course at all. And I should have thought a little bit harder, to be, to be frank. Um, but when I came to do a DME update... We didn't pick up the uh, DME that I keyed in. And I thought, well, given the amount of time we've been flying, given where I thought I was on the map, we should have been well within range of that VOR, that DME, sorry. So I gave it a few minutes longer, just in case we're, we're a bit slow. Still didn't pick it up. And it got to the point where I thought, well, we should be over the top of this DME now. So well within range if we were going fast. Still not picking it. Uh, sorry, slow. Still not picking it up. So at that point, you switch into, okay, so we're not where I thought I was. Something's probably gone wrong with the navigation system. So what are we going to do about it? Now, cheat mode is... Well, you pull up an FSX moving map, whether that be Plan G, whether it be Navigraph, blah, blah, blah. Um, and you just sort of wing it from there. Um, although that is perfectly valid to do because we are flying a simulator at the end of the day. And that is something within our luxury. I quite enjoy using the INS. And I like the fact that every now and then it doesn't work. And to be honest... I'm pretty certain it didn't work because I didn't do it right. So I'm not blaming Siva for this by, by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, Siva, the guys who make the inertial navigation system for the for the sim. And um, yeah, so I thought, right, okay, let's, let's figure it out. Um, so I had my map, because you would have the map in the cockpit, and just started punching in different uh, frequencies. Um... Until I hit one that I was within range of. Flew to... That, that was, you know, roughly on course what I wanted. Or at least in the general direction of London. Flew direct into that. 
So then at that point, when I was atop of that one, I knew, well, I am here at that point, so now I can navigate from there. Uh, and at that point, I was able to actually just pick up Dover. And Dover is what we've got on the Nav 2. So it's on DME 2 down here. Oops, wrong way. So 140-something miles away at the moment. Uh, and I swung... So Nav 2 is on, on the first officer's thing. So actually, if I do... If I jump over to, to their seat. And then I swung the radial round on this button here until it was a straight line into Dover, which would have been something like that, and then I turned our heading to match, and that then puts us on heading hold, uh, and basically just flew a, a straight in direct radial into Dover, and that's exactly what we're doing. Um, so as I say, we're about 130-ish miles away now, 140-ish miles, uh, just over nine tons of fuel. We're, we're okay, we're we're definitely okay for fuel but bearing in mind I added 10 tons of reserves because I knew full well the calcs were just com are completely balked uh, I'm glad I've added that 10 tons because otherwise we'd have, we're, we're pretty much over Brussels at the moment uh, I have got a moving map open now so I can tell you sort of where we are um, we, we'd have had to land at Dusseldorf or somewhere in Germany uh, so we'd have absolutely been out of fuel. Now, I did manage to get our C of G up to about 55.5%. And that was pretty much as good as I can get it. We wanted 55 for the most efficient cruise. And then the virtual flight engineer for the rest of the leg has just been having an absolute field day. It's been bouncing up and down, mainly down. Uh, now it's just bounced up to the top. Um, but it's not something I can do manually at just too much workload if there was a way of doing like share cockpit and someone else could fly this and then i would do all the fuel stuff that's fine but that is a full-time job doing the fuel stuff um in order to achieve all of that i had to reduce our altitude down to flight level 280 as you'll have seen at the bottom of your screen anyway so yeah 120 ish miles from dover uh Which is interesting. So 106 from London. Oh no, that's increasing. Uh, 1136 then is the it's the London VOR, but clearly we're outside of that, and we're actually in the range of another station that happens to be on the same frequency because this number's increasing. And if I think I'm over Europe, and I'm getting closer to Dover, I must be getting closer to London. So it ma makes no sense that these two numbers are diverging. Uh, unless one of them isn't what I think it is um, which is most likely going to be the London one because I think we're currently flying towards Dover so I think this one's correct and then London is further away so there's a good chance that we're not actually in range of that yet so so that number will suddenly change at some point and, and the nav one uh, here this will do a spin of a thing as it gets a lock on the new uh, the new VOR. Mm. Now, when we come to the approach, actually, when we are pretty much wheels on ground, and when I say that, I mean within five or so seconds of wheels on ground, I will be pausing which is just going to cause hell from a flying point of view. But anyway, because I really, really want to get a cool screenshot. And I, and obviously, as a consequence of that, we'll be because we'll be paused, we'll be able to jump outside and you'll be able to see the attitude that we're coming in at. On the outbound flight, I did promise that I would explain the aerodynamics and what's going on there and why the thing doesn't stall uh, at that angle of attack. So I can pause, we'll do that, uh, we'll talk through it, I'll get my screenshot I want for the thumbnail, uh, but I can talk a little bit about the aerodynamics. Um, I'm not an aerodynamics expert by the way, it is not something I ever enjoyed, nor got into uh, during my degree, aeronautical engineering degree. Um, 
but at least I can regurgitate some of the stuff I was taught, whether I completely understand it or not. Um, I understand it enough to be able to tell you a little bit about it, uh, and at least it'll give you some words and some uh, jargon that you can punch into Google, and you might get some hits on Google, but mm, maybe not. Um, you, you'll have to wait and see. There we go. So the DME has suddenly flicked, and now, oh no, it hasn't. No, no, I'm chatting shit. What's new? Uh, while we're down here, around about Mac decimal nine of five, nine of four, there or thereabouts. So, so we're good on speed. I've had to keep tweaking and tuning this as the wind changed. Um, at one point, we were down to uh, 340 knots indicated. Uh, we're now actually back up to 380 to try and keep Mac hold didn't work uh, slightly unsurprisingly actually um, because we're it's, I don't know the intricacies of how Mac hold works on Concorde um, any other aircraft it just pulls that number and holds on it um, my suspicion is the way Concorde did it Mac hold was never designed to be pressed unless you were supersonic um, and at Mac 2 because that's the only time it's ever mentioned on the checklist so I, I don't know if it was a design thing or or what but anyway I was in Mac hold and it just yeah the, the airspeed plummeted um, so uh, went back to uh, indicated hold well it's on indicated acquire at the moment I don't know why it doesn't automatically flick to hold when it's actually acquired it it's weird um, but anyway I assume that is what Concord did so um, who am I to complain realism is something we'd like now I was online uh, as we saw in the last video um, when I discovered how far off course we were uh, because once I got a lock on a radial and, not, and um, on a DME, should I say, and worked out where I was, I could actually plot where we currently are. I knew where we should be because I got the map with the route drawn on it. And, um, yeah, about 300 miles at, the, at that point in time. Obviously, that is now converging because we're, we're coming into London and that's where the two two paths will converge. Um but we were a long way off route. Interestingly, it shouldn't have actually cost us much, if any, fuel because the actual route was a bit of a dog leg and we'd sort of cut the corner, as it were. So I don't think it's cost us too much fuel, if any, at all. It may have even saved us, I don't know. Um, but Dan Parkin, uh, the boss of British Airways Virtual, uh, is currently controlling Heathrow approach, and I thought, and it, and I thought, you know, um, I'd love to fly an old pointy when he's on. There was a tower controller on as well, which was a bit of a shame, because uh, it would have been nice to come in with Dan, uh, and he would have absolutely given us two seven left. I, I'm certain of that. But even if he didn't, well, it's not a biggie, because um, they're currently on two six two seven right. Um, but it was more the thing that put me off was the amount of traffic. There's a lot of traffic on Heathrow at the moment on VATSIM. Uh, and my issue was, well, is, and you know from some of the videos, uh, my VAS, virtual address space, really suffers. Really, really suffers. Um, so why are we still not picking up London? Oh, there we go. Oh, we are on London now. There we go. No, that's got to be bollocks. Is it really 70 miles from Dover to London? I suppose it probably is, actually. Uh, but as you can see, out of yonder window, we are flying roughly above Dunkirk-ish. Dunkirk's actually sort of down here. So, you know, not a million miles away. But off the nose, which we won't see because of our nose-up attitude and subsonic and all the rest of it, but off the nose is Blighty itself and the White Cliffs. 
And we know we're, we're, we're approaching England because look at the cloud. Blooming everywhere. What a surprise. Uh, but now we are not online. We do, therefore, have the benefit uh, of coming straight in. Uh, other way. So, what I want to do... How do you do heading hold? Sorry, not heading hold. How do you do nav, but on the other guy? Do I have to flip these? I do. So if I now do Vorlock... No, I didn't like that. So how do I... I want to do Vorlock, but I want to do it on Nav 2, not on Nav 1. I feel like there's a, a flicky switch somewhere that I've not flickied. Nav 1 INS, Nav... Sorry. Nav or INS, Channel 1. Nav INS, Channel 2. But that's probably just for the display. So how do I set it for the FCS, the autopilot? I don't know the answer to that. Huh. No, I genuinely don't know the answer to that. Well, no matter, we will uh, wing it, because what else do we do? So, thanks fly level 180, uh, reduce the speed back to 300 knots. We can just about see Blighty down there, and we're, we're shooting for the Thames Estuary. But the problem is, well, one, visibility... In terms of cloud and out the front of Concord, yeah, good luck. Um, because you ain't seeing shit out of that. Particularly with the nose up attitude we've got. I mean, look at the. If you look at the artificial horizon here, we're at what? Four and a half? Four? You no, know, three and a half? Three and a third ish degrees nose up? Um, just to try and maintain straight and level flight? She doesn't like flying slow. Um so yeah, we we haven't got we haven't got a hope in hell actually of seeing the estuary. Unless we did sort of VFR flying techniques where you do a bit of a wiggler roo so you can see sideways and so on and so forth. Uh or drop the nose, but this is just gonna plummet towards the ground. Um I'd rather do it on the radios to be perfectly honest. And talking of which we can key in the ILS, which is oh yeah, 109.5 on a radial of 2.7.0. That's for 2.7 left. Uh, we won't be picking that up yet, by the way. And then the London VOR, uh, which I shouldn't have... shouldn't have chinned off, is 1.136. 1136 there and um, we roughly want to come in at a radial of 270 on that as well so what we can see so just to try and sort of explain to you a bit of radio navigation because this is the sort of bread and butter really um, on nav 1 we have the ILS nothing showing yet far too far away on nav 2 over on the first officer's side hang on there we go, first officer's side. We can see we've got something. We've got a line. We've got a thing. Uh, I've just keyed in London. And uh, a radial of 270. 
So that line is going to start moving in. And what we effectively will do is when that orange line is in the middle, that means we are on a radial of 270 or 090 outbound uh, into London. And if we follow that, we know we are coming into London perfectly uh, east-west. And that's exactly what I want to do. In fact, so much so, I'm going to swing us round now. So I think I can see the estuary. Yes, I can. Look, there's a bit of coastline off our left-hand side. And this looks remarkably like estuary. So, cabin crew, 15 minutes. Not that one. Yeah, I'm clicking every button on my mouse and that ain't doing anything. So cabin signs will come on now. Sorry guys, no more smoking. And engine control schedule will go to approach. Probably a smidge early, but it's not disastrously early. So over to approach there like that. Brake fans are off. Batteries are still on, that's fine. Fuel weight C of G is actually good and is quite far forwards, which is what we want. V ref's going to be around about the 150 to 160 knot mark. Uh, so actually, let's just set some of the bugs. Just gives uh, These really do help, actually. They don't do anything, it's just a visual indication for me. So we'll switch over to Autopilot 2. Oh, no we won't. We'll do that. We'll do Alt Acquire. We'll do Vert Speed. Oh, Alt Acquire again. Flight Director 2 we'll take. And we'll switch over to Flight Director 2. Lovely. So as you can see then, the radial, the 270 radial into London is just slightly to our right hand side. So I'll just turn right, oops, he says, Have a, uh, we're on Nav 2 now, well, sorry, we're on Autopilot 2, so we'll just turn right, 10 degrees is probably too much to be honest, but uh, it's alright, we've got, we've got time on our sides. And I'll slow us down to 260 knots. Close enough. Hang on. Lovely. So now we can see we're pretty much flying, flying straight towards London. We've not picked up the ILS yet. But that's because <laughs> we've only... Not even quite in the estuary yet. Thames estuary. But we're getting there. In fact, yeah, we are actually just in the estuary now. So that gives you an idea where we are. Fuel, 5.2 tonnes. Sketchy, for want of a better word. Um, we're not quite descending as much as I'd like. So I'm going to go nose down a bit. thousand feet a minute is probably not enough so let's just increase that a bit pardon me There we are, 2,000 feet a minute. Lovely. Oh, hello, textures. There we go. And you can see there's the Thames estuary there, look. Which means we're probably on that line, yep. So we want to swing to 270 because we're now on this line. And 270 will be 
going directly west into London and the runways of course are east west uh, London or west east if you prefer so back comes the speed bring us right back now to 220 which is uh, at this weight that will be our circuit speed um, normally it would be around about the 250 mark 240 ish mark something like that a little bit faster obviously you can sig significantly faster than normal airliners these days and that's purely because well we don't have flaps thousand to go actually I want to keep the descent going to flight level 100 would be nice So down goes the visor. Now our speed is uh, below 300 knots. Can't drop the nose yet. We're still a little bit quick for that. Oh, and I still haven't fixed joystick cam. Ugh. And as soon as we pick up the ILS, uh, I can change Nav 2 over to 109.5 uh, and then we can autopilot on to the ILS and then uh, that can manage our final descent. So, as you can see, we're just sort of, uh, just coming into the Thames proper now, rather than the Thames estuary, so I guess we're probably somewhere near the dam. Don't know whether it's uh, even modelled in vanilla scenery. Might be. Thames Barrier or whatever it's called. It's Thames Barrier, isn't it? To be honest, I don't actually know where on the Thames it is. Oh, but there's London City. Oh shit, we are high. Hello, textures. Thank you. And we've picked up the ILS now. Uh, but you know what? I think we're a bit too high. Just got enough fuel maybe to do this. I'm going to do what's called an orbit. So we'll just do a 360 turn, it's like a single stack I guess. Just gives us a bit more time to, uh, to reduce in altitude. So lights on. QNH London is 1020. 020 and we will do yonder side as well 1020 autopilot changeover that is done visor nose yeah we're on progress there landing checklist yeah okay fine we're not quite that far yet I've turned the cabin lights on by the way so hopefully uh, you can see stuff a bit better
Yeah, we were we were definitely high, but we were also fast. So high and fast is a problem. High and slow, not so much of a problem. Low and fast, not so much of a problem. So you convert your either your height into speed or your speed into height, so you can sort of get things back. But if you're high and fast, you there's nowhere for the energy to go. It's a terrible explanation, but anyway. I want to end up roughly on a radial of two sorry, on a heading of two four zero, which gives us a thirty degree intercept onto the ILS. And I can probably get away with keying that in now. And I'll just do it on this side just for uh, OCD. And we can see here, so we have picked up the ILS. It's off to our left hand side. Uh, and the glide is below us, so we're still high. But um, that shouldn't be too much of a problem now. Because she likes to fall. Just see Wembley down there, I think that was. Speeds back nicely, so nose down to 5 degrees. Yeah, we are pretty bingo on fuel now. Down past six and a half thousand feet, that, that's good. We'll take all the likes on now before I forget. And the yellow pumps come on apparently, that's something I didn't actually know. So we're just waiting for the ILS to come in now, so this orange line to come towards the middle. And then we can uh, flip land on. Our glide is good now, actually. So what I'll do, I'll just bring the nose up a bit. This is so difficult to do because the click spot is tiny. It'll be a lot easier in real life. So what we're looking at down here is this little yellow thing, that's your, your glide slope, you want it in the middle to be bang on, and then this yellow stroke orange thing, you want it to be in the middle. That's what we're looking for with this style of INS. Uh, you can see how this is fogged up, so I'm going to turn this on full chat. And now we're in a cloud, it's got bumpy as hell. Oh, of course it's raining. Why wouldn't it be? And that's the line coming in now, so over to land. Second autopilot going on, second auto throttle going on. Oh yeah, that's uh, that's a bit bumpy. So we'll take gear down. And the nose can come down the rest of the way. I think I'm visual, but not convincingly. There's a huge lag spike. Notice I've, I've, I have managed to reduce them in frequency.
Good job I wasn't visual, that's a building, that's the runway. And despite that light not being on, we do appear to be... Uh, Radio altimeters are active. Do appear to be uh, captured on glide and localizer because, as I say, there, look, yellow thingy in the middle, yellow orangey thingy in the middle, which is exactly what we want. And here we go, we've got to sit up in our seat. That's where Trek IR would be really good, or something similar. So I'm just going to let the aircraft settle on the approach. I don't know why, but brake fans are supposed to be off, but I call BS. I want them on. So that's 160 knots, 10 degrees nose up. Can't, don't really want to slow down more than that. And of course all the trees will be bought because I want my screenshot. Cheers FSX. I think that's almost certainly my fault actually. Uh, save. And as I say, we will be pausing in a moment. 1000 feet radio. Right, so I'm fully manual. Just got to watch that throttle. Quite high throttle here. I'm about 70% throttle. Because we're such high drag, because the nose is so high up. We need it. Oh. You can see my control inputs down here on the right. Stable. Four hundred feet. Three hundred feet. Two hundred feet. One hundred feet. One hundred to go. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Right. So, oh, we've actually got a bit of traffic in the background. So let me just quickly do a print the screen on there. Save. So I said we would talk briefly about what's going on. Hello. <laughs> what's going on here? Look. Any other aircraft, you'd be stalled there. Hey. Yeah, borderline but you you know you're likely to be stalled so why isn't concord well it's all to do with the shape of this wing like that what happens when the wing stalls what it actually is is the air that's coming over the top here like that and being turned and deflected downwards because it's getting sucked to the surface of the wing can't turn fast enough so it doesn't quite make the turn and ends up tumbling it's called turbulence effectively um it's it goes from being laminar so where everything is just turning nicely you know and it's all lots of parallel straight lines to suddenly it goes nope and does a spinema thing now the beauty of a delta wing it, uh, and when, when it's doing the spinema thing, it's no longer generating the same amount of lift. It's generating significantly less lift. Not zero, but significantly less. Now, the beauty of a delta is that tumbling air, because it's actually doing a spiral, it's moving quite fast. And we know from Bernoulli's principle, 
lift is a half times rho, which is air density, that's not changing. V squared, which is your, the air velocity. S, which is the wing area, that's not changing. CL, coefficient of the lift. Well, that's not changing either because we've got no flaps or anything. So the V squared, because the air is now spinning, it's actually going quite fast. Now, for any other wing that's only that big, it starts its spinning a thing, but it's already past the wing, so it's, it's not affecting the wing back here. But because the delta wing is so long, it's got such a long cord, that spinning a thing, it's actually going quite quick along the top surface of the wing. And because it's going fast, it's generating some lift. So what this aircraft's capable of doing, uh, and, and most deltas are, and one of the big reasons for having a delta wing is that once the air goes from lamina, nice straight lines, to doing the spinema thing, it doesn't suddenly lose all of its lift. It doesn't just flop to the ground. It's still actually generating a good amount of lift. It's not as efficient, but it's still generating a good amount of lift. And we can use that lift, and that's exactly what we want to do. So we don't have flaps or anything like that. It creates a ton of drag, but we're in landing, so actually we want a ton of drag, so that's a good thing. But that's how a delta wing is effectively able to fly what we call post-stall. So after the airflow has stalled, i.e. gone turbulent rather than laminate, nice straight lines, um, it's still actually able to generate enough lift. Possibly not explain that amazingly well, but that, that is exactly what's going on. Now, here comes the tricky bit. I've got to unpause and hopefully remember what angle I have the stick at. 15. Cool, that was pretty good considering. Gently put the nose down. There's the buckets for the reversers. 50, 40, 20 knots. Remember to keep the brakes on when you release the reversers because the engines are actually spooled up quite high. Hi Cabron, why are we not stopping? And my rudder pedals are spinning on the floor. 20 knots, my ass. I was going off his calls. Uh, not overshot the taxiway by a huge amount, but we have absolutely overshot it. So, she's hard work. Great fun, though. And my vast warning is flashing like a trooper. So nose comes up. Inboard engines go off. And it's now going to start ping-ponging like an absolute mother. So you what, let's actually do the after landing checklist properly. So... Engine idles go to low for taxi. Anti-ice off, drain heaters, uh, pressure static and ADS goes off. So that's that button, that button, that button. or will switch on that one. Flight control inverters go off, which is that one and that one. Anti-stall can come off, don't need them anymore. Don't need any of this thing in the thing. Uh, all the trims and artificial fields and stuff like that. Don't care for any of that. That's why I don't normally do it. Because she starts ping-ponging at you like an absolute brute. Transponders on standby. Nose is at 5 degrees. I've done that. Uh, Jennies can come off for the inboard engines. Uh, as can the bleeds. But we'll turn the cross feeds on so we can keep all the packs going. Probably don't need them to be honest. Uh, 
brake temperatures are a little warm, but we're all right. Exactly what I'd expect, to be perfectly honest. Landing lights are off, brakes. Uh, oh, that's parking checklist. Right, cool. So let us go and park back at Terminal 4, where we started. Some Royal Flight there, that's the Royal Lounge. There's quite a few aircraft at Terminal 4, actually. I wonder if there's another pointy. For some reason, the model matching doesn't work for Concorde. I'm not entirely sure why. I've, uh, again, it'll be something I've just not set up. So two engine taxi, perfectly normal for Concorde uh, on the outboard engines. Oh, Royal Flight's vanished. INSs can come off, we don't need them now. If I can remember the way. I bet that's another Concorde. Not many other people use Terminal 4. I think Chewy was actually inbound from Milan? Milan or Madeira? No, I think it was Milan. If you're into your flight sim in, go and watch Chewy. Chewy 94, 95. Ah, search Chewy. He's brilliant. He's in Chewbacca. Absolute ace. Well, 255 is a pretty uh, reasonable landing. I'm very happy with that, considering we paused. And I would be very happy with that, even if we hadn't paused. So, uh, yeah, lovely. So, lights off, it's coming into stand. Just going to keep the throttle up a little bit. Oh yeah, we've only got two engines, haven't we? That's why I need so much more. About 50% throttle there. Which is what, 80% N2, N2, yeah. Turning physics are just not very good on this. It started turning us right then. Oh, that's because we've just lost an engine. Ha! <laughs> that's quite amusing. So we're out of fuel. God, talk about cutting it fine then. Yeah, stuff it, punch the throttle. Yeah, see, look, we've lost engine four, right, of, uh, out of fuel. And I can't seem to steer with one engine. That's quite unrealistic. But you can see I'm, I've got the wheel turned. It's just refusing to go left. There's some dodgy dynamics going on there. So we'll have to make do with wherever we end up. Next to this guy. I wonder if that is another Concorde. Anyway. Right, so first officer seats to get the parking brake on. Parking checklist. Landing lights. Taxi lights are all off. 
nose visor can come up. Batteries can come off. We'll request ground power and ground air. Uh, other one. So we now have ground power and now packs are all on, cross bleeds are all on so we can take them off. Throttle masters can come off. She likes ping ponging. Uh, Anti collision lights can come off. All of those things. Oops. Seatbelt signs and all that jazz can come off. Ground conditioning, that's fine. DC brake fans can come off if the brakes are cooled down, which they have. Air data computers can come off. INS off, we've already done that. Have light off, transponder is already off, ground power. And that's us done. Fun dabby dozy. So there is a rotation to Larnaca and back. Noting that 10, t 10 tons of reserve fuel, particularly on the way back there, we needed every single last bit of fume. Hope you enjoyed. See you on the next one.